Good morning. Again, this is Gabby with Career Conversation Cafe, and today we're going live with Women in STEM with Ms. Karina. She'll be joining us here shortly. As we wait, I just want to do a quick little shout out to all the medical professionals uh, that are working very hard to maintain um, what's going on in our city. And for all those who have been infected, please stay safe, stay home, and get better. Um, and we just wanted to do a little shout out to you all and thank you for your service continually working in our hospitals all the time. I also wanted to do a little um, shout out to you all, all our current alumni, I'm uh, forgive me, current students, our minors. We have a challenge contest going on where you can win potentially one out of three prizes. And I don't know if you know that, it's on Instagram, it's happening right now. And from November 2nd through November 16th, so you have two weeks. You have to do only three things. One is tag your friends in the comment section that's of that post, which is the No Excuses November Challenge post. Two is share the post on your story with the, with the hashtag, hashtag Wi-Fi picks up. And the third one is to just sign up for one of our virtual workshops through JobMine and you'll be entered into the winning. We have several entries already. We're super excited to get you guys to get those prizes. Uh, the first prize, the first spin is gonna be a rocket notebook where you could take notes and it goes to your cloud and you just erase the page. It's very eco-friendly and it's awesome. Like it saves all your notes. So it's all digital. The second spin is going to be this amazing alarm clock that is uh, HD. It's beautiful too. It's just a very classy looking alarm clock. I know because right now what's, what's going on with COVID, it's hard to kind of maintain that schedule and wake up on time. This alarm clock will do that and more. Uh, and then the last one is an awesome UTEP mask because we know right now what's going on again with COVID. Um, it's awesome to have those masks ready to go and we always have that style. So we want to support UTEP minors and you have a UTEP mask available for you. So again, it's happening until November 16th. You just got to do three things through Instagram. We have the no excuses November challenge, meaning no excuses on your future. So be sure to uh, try out that contest with us. If you need any more information, it's on our, on our uh, post, so be sure to look at that. Again, today we're gonna to be meeting with Miss Anna. I mean, sorry, forgive me. What did I say, Miss Anna? Miss Anna was like a while ago. With Miss Karina Alba, she'll be joining us. She is, I think she's with us live right now, so I'm pretty excited to have her on once, she's, once she joins us. Let me go see if I can invite her shortly. There she is, and we're joining us. So as a kind of uh, preface to what she, was for the minors. Hey, Karina. Hi. Hi. So this is Miss Karina. She was a peer career advisor, a PCA for the Career Center, and now she's doing amazing things and repping uh, minors out there over in Kentucky for the Ford yeah. Company. So this is exciting. How's the yeah. weather? It's like I looked up. It was about fifty-seven degrees. Is that what you're feeling today? Uh, yeah, it's been, it's a little bit warmer than that right now, but the mornings are definitely pretty, pretty chilly. Um, but yeah, I think right now it's in the sixties, so it's a little bit warmer. <laughs> okay. So it's good. It's, it's good weather. It's yeah. Very good weather. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So again, I just wanted to introduce Miss Karina Alva. She is over in Kentucky. She's not here in El Paso. She's super excited to be with us today. And I just want to go ahead and get started. So you were, you're a minor and you're an alumni. What did you study when you were here at UTEP? So I studied the Metallurgical and Material Science Engineering program. At the time, it was just Metallurgical and Material Science, but I think they added biomedical since I left recently. But yeah, I was the uh, smallest of the engineering groups. And uh, for some people who don't know, some of the, yeah, <laughs> some of the, uh, the, the first, basically, when it used to be Texas College of Mines and Metallurgy. So, you know, we're tiny, but we're, we're old. You're the OGs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. They always say it's the smallest one and it's. I mean, but it's a great program. So what are you doing now? Where are you? Well, not physically right now. We know you're in Kentucky. <laughs> but what are you, what's going on now in your professional life? Well, um, like you said, I'm currently working in Kentucky at Ford Motor Company. I work at the Kentucky Stamping Plant. This is where we stamp the, um, the body pieces for the Ford F-150, the 250, the 350, and the Expedition. And I believe we also do some for the uh, some of the Lincoln Navigators. We stamp all the bodies. This plant actually does more than just the stamping process. The assemblies are done here and the painting and a couple of other uh, things. It's a huge plant. It ta oh, takes, yeah. takes me like 10 minutes just to get out of my office area. It's pretty big. It's a very big campus. Oh, my God. That's what That's I do. Good now. walk. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very good walk. <laughs> so, so you current, I mean, you just, you just arrived, right? You just started this new position uh, here yes. in Kentucky. So w when you come back into UTEP, 
and think about your time as a UTEP minor, like what did UTEP prepare you for, for what you're doing right now? Were you part of any groups, organizations? What, how did UTEP kind of set you up a little bit? So you just set me up very, very good. Um, actually, I was, I'm trying to remember the name of the or organization. There's a couple of metallurgy centric organizations uh, that I was a part of. Uh, basically just giving me all of my, my background information. I mean, college college is a great place to gain information, get your degree oh. and stuff like that. Other things you did for me, uh, I used to work at the Career Center, like you mentioned, so I understood of all the career preparation resources, which is some of the greatest things I wish I would have taken more advantage before I started working there. But after I started working there, you know, I was able to take advantage of all of our resources and also provide those resources back to the students. So working with the Career Center is probably the favorite thing I took out of out of UTEP that wasn't related to my degree. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I loved working there and I loved having the opportunity to tell the students all the information that I was learning. Um, and it's, it's just a great resource. It's probably one of the best resources that you have because you know, once you leave school, you know, you want to have all of these tools available yeah. to you that you've learned through the Career Center to be able to get a job. And, you know, I've been able to use these tools and those resources and what I've learned throughout the years to help me get to where I am today. And it's awesome. She's so awesome. Yes. And I'm so glad that thanks for shouting out to us at the Career Center. We're here for you. So if you're watching, come get some help. Uh, <laughs> alumni as well as welcome. So I'm so glad that you were able to use a lot of the resources that we have at the Career Center for your benefit. Um, so we're gonna go into the topic of women in STEM. You're representing all women in STEM. No, I'm just kidding. You're representing <laughs> being a woman in STEM in, in, in this kind of uh, engineering, which is a male dominated field. What, how is it being a woman in your position? How have you felt, how, how have you felt? What have you have to do to kind of be the presence that you are? So pretty much in any, almost in any STEM, field when you're uh, considered a minority, which women are considered minorities within the STEM field, mm -hmm. uh, there's always, I would say nine times out of 10, you're always in situations where you're kind of the only girl in the room. You're the only woman in the room. So that even, even when you're not among other engineering professionals or other STEM professionals, even just within the hierarchy of work, typically uh, men tend to sit in those more hierarchy positions because specifically women in STEM drop off uh, from taking on those higher positions within their first entry level position. So that's one thing that I've noticed is that typically when I'm in a, in a meeting on a, on, a, on a higher level and we're discussing things about either product developments or current processes, it's I'm kind of the only girl in there. That's really the one thing that I've noticed a lot. Uh, I will say when you do see another girl that's also in a, in a STEM science, you kind of stick together. That's one thing that I've always <laughs> learned is very important is when you see someone else that's at, at the same kind of level as you are in terms of STEM, in terms of just being a woman in, in a higher up position, you want to kind of stick together because there are moments where your voice can be lost in, in some cases. It does happen. There are certain things now in place that make it a little bit easier. For instance, Ford has tons of programs and organizations within the Ford community that keep the women together. They literally have an organization called the Women of Ford, which is just uh, a group of all the ladies within the Ford industry uh, kind of working to support each other and to keep let our voices be heard. So there are companies out there that work really, really hard to make sure that all these minority groups have the ability to um, stand out or stand up, really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I've noticed. Ford is really good at doing that. I know there's other larger organizations that do. Yeah. But one thing I have noticed for sure is just, you just, you kind of just got to be there. You got to be present. You got to be prepared as much as you can, because if you're, if you're not, they'll eat you up in there for sure. Oh yeah. And I, I bet that's, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of women can relate to that in any field that they're in, but um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very predominant. And I've had another friend who's female STEM and she said the same exact thing you said. Sometimes you're the only woman in that room and yeah. your voice can get muddled in with the noise and you have to make sure, you know, like you just said, you have to know what you're talking about. You have to be confident. Um, I think it's also a biological instinct to kind of attach to people who look like you, feel like you have the same, um, yeah. just even the same gender as you uh, identify as that. So that's, that's, that was great. I, I loved, I was actually, my next question was, 
have you found any kind of resources? Did you do any prior research to see if there were uh, female support or was it just kind of, you learned that as you entered? I learned that as I entered, um, when I was still on the job market looking for some work earlier this year, um, a couple of the organizations that I interviewed with, um, one in particular mentioned that the CEO of the company was actually a woman. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, and I had never, ever seen that in any of the other positions I had been applying for. And I was really, really impressed. And that particular organization, I can't remember what it was at the time, they actually did have a, an award, a recognition for having a uh, predominantly female higher up organization. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't something that I initially was seeking, but I noticed as I was applying, that was definitely something that I wanted to make sure company had. So when I interviewed with Ford, that was definitely one of my questions to see how, how is the women organizations working? Are there resources? And that's when I found out that Ford did have some of those resources, not just for, uh, for women. They also have resources for other types of minorities. Mm -hmm. So um, they're out there. I will say that they're out there. I love that you asked that in your interview. Like that's yes. a lot of, a lot of companies don't expect people to ask that, ask, you know, ask, do you have diversity, inclusion, equal opportunity? Mm -hmm. What organizations do you host? Do you kind of like you have, uh, they support women. What was the title? Women in Ford? Yeah, it's called Women in Ford, Women in Ford. We, uh, it, we, we even have our own like chat group uh, that you can speak to women uh, in the Ford organization all over the world. Oh, and um they would do charity events together, different things. Right now with COVID, they've kind of halted a lot of those in-person live events. And actually, going on right now, the um, Society of Women Engineers Conference is actually occurring right now. It's all virtual, all digital. And what Ford provided for us as uh, members of our organization, they provided us with the capability to register for that conference. So throughout the day, I've been sitting in on a couple of, uh, of these WebEx live meetings oh. uh, talking about all of these things about women working in STEM. It's been really, really great. Um, so if you have the opportunity to ask this in your interview, or if you have the opportunity to, to look it up, I definitely would. It does make a difference. It does kind of help in certain cases, because at least you know that there are other people within your organization that can uh, relate to you. Yes. Oh, very, very good advice. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go on to my next question, which was, you have a lot of experience in the engineering realm, doing lots of different things uh, throughout mm -hmm. since you graduated and even during your uh, time at UTEP. How have those experiences shaped you as an engineer? Um, just a few, you were at Wyman Gordon, Gulf Co, Ford, come, uh, and then now you're at Ford. Uh, so how have those shaped you to become an engineer or even focusing on what you want to do? So I never thought I would end up in the automotive industry. It was actually by chance that I, I got here. It yeah. was it was so weird. Initially, when I graduated, I wanted to work in copper. I wanted to go into copper refining because that's really popular out west. And that would have mm -hmm. kept me in El Paso a little bit longer. But I somehow ended up in the steel, oil, and gas industry. Um, and then I moved my way into aerospace. And then I somehow ended up here in, in automotive. But all of those experiences coming from uh from you know large steel forging understanding in a much more broader sense i would say in steel forgings in most cases it's very very uh lenient steel is going to do what it wants to do but you can really really beat out the properties and then moving into an industry that's much tighter the aerospace industry has a lot of restrictions mm -hmm. um a lot of guidelines to follow and then kind of coming into automotive which is kind of dancing in between in, in between them, uh, it's been very interesting, but every single experience that I've had going from one extreme to the other, and then finally ending, ending up here has been, um, it's been interesting. And in all my cases, I've worked with large groups of people while working at Wyman, and I worked with only one other person working at Golf Co. And now I'm back to kind of being by myself. Uh, all those experiences have kind of prepared me to get to this particular point in my life where I think I'm ready to stick in automotive for the long haul. And it's just, it's been very random. <laughs> it's unpredictable. But you know what? Sometimes that's a good thing. It's a good thing to kind of just oh, yeah. let, let the world, let the universe take you where it wants to take you. And that was exactly why I asked you because they're so different. And it's just, 
for our students just to, you know, try everything because you never know what's going to fit your life, what you're going to be like, oh, I actually like doing that. Let me stay here. So I love that you have, you tried so many different things and now you have something that you're passionate about and it's in Kentucky and you, you went over there and it's just awesome because sometimes, like you said, we tend to stay um, in the Western area to be in our comfort zone and you, yes, our little bubble and we, I love our bubble. Everybody loves our bubble, but getting out of that bubble really opens the world in a, well, of course it opens the world because you get out, but <laughs> you, it, it does, it offers you opportunities that you wouldn't have seeked here. So I do have a question that kind of ties into what we're talking to. What would you have told your freshman self? I'm back. <laughs> Since you have gone through all this experience and now you're thinking like, wow, I wish I would have known this or done this when I was younger. What would you have told your freshman self going back in time? freshman self is that it's okay for things to not go as planned. <laughs> I think um, we all need to hear that. All right, I think right. Um, when I first uh, enrolled into UTEP, I was going in for mechanical engineering. And about a year, a year and a half, almost two years into the program, that's when I realized that I wanted to switch to metallurgy, which is the, which is in most cases for most of the metallurgy uh, majors. That's usually what happens. A lot of us kind of migrated from another engineering or from another degree altogether. And that should have been the tall tale sign to me as a freshman that things weren't going to go exactly how I initially wanted them to go. Um, that should have been my first clue. But yeah, if I'm speaking to my freshman self, it have been like, it's okay that things don't go according to plan because ending up here in Kentucky, in Louisville, Kentucky at Ford Motor Company was definitely not <laughs> my plan. It definitely wasn't anything I no. expected. Um, but I'm very fortunate that I've, ended up here at such a great organization a great company but yeah just for anybody out there it's okay if things don't go according to plan because you know it, it worked out in the end yes it, it will work out it's just the little struggle yeah. in between and the figuring it out feels like it's gonna take forever and then it lands so just stick it out um and that yeah. was Ms. Betsy Castro you remember her she asked that question yeah. she also asked your major has a very narrow job outlook what advice do you have for other Mets Oh, whew. well, <laughs> I would say, oh, definitely, you know, keep, don't, don't think so, because I mean, our, our degree, this is a really good question, our degree, especially coming out of UTEP, has a very heavy focus in hard metals and copper specifically, like I mentioned, I thought mm -hmm. I was going to be in the copper industry uh, a lot, and it's mostly because uh, the Rod Mill Freeport Macmoran is just down the street from UTEP, so that's the other reason why a lot of uh, our education is hyper-focused on that, and is also very hyper-focused on, on steel as well, mm -hmm. but um, I would just say to make sure that you keep an open mind. When I first in initially had applied and moved from Gulf Coast to Boyman Gordon, I was very, very nervous to get into the aerospace industry. I thought, okay, we really need a metallurgist for all of their regulations are really, really tight. There's not a lot of room in terms of design capability. What, why am I going into this? And one thing I took from that position is that even though things are on tight restrictions and there's a lot of government regulations that keep you tied down to certain processes, there's still a lot of room to be an engineer, which mm -hmm. is um, something I've taken in before. Because there are a lot of regulations in Ford. I mean, we're working on vehicles that we're going to put on the road and put people in. So there's a lot of rules, a lot of regulations. you got to make sure that you stand by. Um, but there's still a lot of room to work out the sciences. So being in such a narrow field, you have to understand that metallurgists can pretty much sit anywhere. So you want to keep your mindset as broad as possible. Like I said, I never knew I was going to get into the automotive industry. Some people that I know work um, work for the food industry as a design, as design metallurgist for food packaging. Who knew? Who knew uh, you yeah. could do that? That's very cool. it, is, it. it is a very narrow field, but as long as you're keeping an open mind and you're keeping um, your searches as open as 
you can. You never know. I mean, this position that I'm in is a stamping engineer slash metallurgist. And had I just thought, oh, I just need to look for metallurgist positions, I would have never been able to find this. So keeping your options open and understanding that your position is very niche, however, can be applied to about everything is very, 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 very important. Otherwise, you're going to, you know, narrow your, your, your point of view. Like, like I said, I thought I was going to go into copper. When I first applied for positions, that's where I stuck to. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to go into copper. That's all I know how to do. Um, apparently, that's not all I know how to <laughs> no, do. It's not here. <laughs> and it's a regional. I think it's also, of course, because of the regional, the area we're in, we're trying to service what's going on over there. But you are, you could do anything. Like, it's just, you, you will learn how to do it. Um, yeah. So to tie it up, because we're ready, uh, we're, we're ready on that good time. And I don't want to teach too much time because I know you're working. Um, thank you first for just, you know, interviewing with us today and talking to our students about being a woman in a STEM field. Um, I just wanted to, I have two things. One, do you have any other tips you can give to the women that are going uh, into any women students going into the engineering field? Yes. Uh, trust your knowledge. That's, that's something that I still to myself struggle with is trust that you, that, you know, you're talking about, I, I, there's moments, you know, when someone comes and asks me a question and there's a crisis going on and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. (laughs) And all of a sudden it'll, it'll click in my brain and I'll spit something out to them that I know is correct. And that's based off of my previous knowledge. It's based off of the mm-hmm. information given to me. And at the end of the conversation, when I've helped them with their problem, all of a sudden I realized, Oh my gosh, I really do know what I talk, what I'm talking about. I am awesome. It, yeah. It throws me off sometimes, but it's just because I have to remember, you have to trust that, you know, what you're talking about, trust that you're smart, trust that you are aware. Um, and that, you know, kind of ties back to being in, you just, women in STEM because sometimes you you doubt yourself especially when you're in a room of other people who uh, who are mostly male and who you might believe are smarter than you or just you know more well versed and in some cases that happens because I mean especially being a new professional within this uh, within this field this is my first time in automotive like I mentioned you know I did doubt myself at moments at the beginning a week ago (laughs) but now yeah. <laughs> but now, you know, doing your research and really trying to make sure that you stay on top of what the new innovations are, it's just, you just got to trust yourself sometimes. It's, you know, it's scary. It's really, really scary, especially when you look around the room and no one really can relate to your, your struggles or just mm-hmm. relate to you in general. Um, but just trust yourself because you can do it. I know I you tr- can do it. Yes. Uh, see, Karina knows you can do it. And my second question, my second uh, last thing was if you can offer a tip to all engineers, not just metallurgy, all of them, what is something you would tell all the students? What's something you would just be, this is what, for all engineering students? Uh, Never stop learning. Uh, College is going to take you so, so far, but once you actually start getting into your specific field and, and actually working your job, there's so much more to learn there's so much knowledge out there that can be overwhelming but you you can't stop learning you got to keep moving forward you got to keep teaching yourself uh college does a really really good job at teaching you how you learn so use that to your advantage the way i took notes in college is the same way i take notes in meetings now Mm -hmm. and you know keep an open mind continue to learn and even learn from people that you don't really expect to be able to teach you something because as as engineering professionals I have noticed sometimes we kind of get into our heads that oh, I went to school for this I'm really really knowledgeable on this um some people can't help me because they don't understand what I'm talking about but a lot of the times there are people that I have been working in specifically in manufacturing for years years and years and years and years and they can teach you so many things even though they're not degreed but mm-hmm. just never stop learning Oh, yes. Oh, that was great. So again, we have Ms. Karina Oliva. She just took time out of her busy day to come talk to us about women in STEM with Karina and just the engineering field and metallurgy field and her experience from being a minor to where she's at in Kentucky. She's all the way over there with the Ford company. So thank you so much for taking time. I just want to do a, a little clink with your, oh, with your little drink. I, my water I know I, was, I ha- wasn't able to. I know I didn't have any time to drink this time. I was just listening. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> but thank you so much and we appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. Stay safe and we'll definitely be in touch later and see you soon. Awesome. Thank Bye you. guys. Enjoy your day, my Bye. Bye. Bye.